in Greenock near Glasgow, there's a massive job. 48 derelict flats used for years by squatters and drug takers need to be cleared and made safe in just seven days. But no one is sure exactly what the job involves. Lewis Fordham is first in to conduct a survey. It's about to do a site survey. Don't know what's lying ahead of us, so let's go and see what we can find. It looks pretty bad. And with 48 flats, it's one of the biggest jobs he's taken on. Now power on a building, meters off. Lots of debris for the ceiling come down. I'd imagine that the local scrap merchant's been in. Thanks to the high price of copper, everything metal has been stripped from the flats and sold for scrap. And they've been left in a dangerous condition. OK, big hole there, that's where they go down and find other treasures. The reason for the lack of power soon becomes clear. You can see here the meters and fuse boxes have been stripped there. Someone stole the electricity meter. This is, uh, unfortunately, a pretty typical site that we've got. But the guys get in before we do, strip her out, make the conditions really hazardous, dangerous to work in. Uh, all for a few pounds. Nice mess in here. Lewis has seen it all before. Uh, I've got chests, similar as I've got in my house. Right, yeah, that's a bad one. You know, there's a lot of stuff going to be moved here, there's a lot piled up here, a lot of hazards. It's challenging, but it's a, a job that we can take um, quite easily and quite successfully. But as he moves through the flats, that view is about to change. Yeah, I like a wee drink. Oh. Now you watch here, I can see some Telltale signs of drug abuse. Yep, there we go. A couple of hypodermics, tin foil. Uh, so that means this flat's been used as some sort of drug user's den. The job's just got a whole lot bigger and tougher. I've got another 45 that possibly could contain this, so this changes everything how we work and how we operate. Oh, God. Smells in here. I think they've used this room as some sort of toilet. <coughs> Sodden mattress. If you're thinking this might make a nice first step on the property ladder, forget it. These flats are way beyond repair and a magnet for drug users. They'll have to be demolished, but not until Lewis and his team have made them safe. Roof's been leaking. Lewis finds evidence that some of this grime has been here for decades. Oh, oh nice one. The old tenants lagger they cans. You can see how long this property's potentially been empty. Um, used to like they cans looking at the, the nice woman. Give you something to look at. Scotland used to go mental for them and used to pick their own sort of lady that they would drink with. Um, certainly brings back memories. Lewis is keen to point out that he wasn't drinking in the 70s. Obviously, I'm a bit young to be drinking at that type of can, but uh, I remember my father, etc., gone mental for that type of can. Ah, um, memories. As he moves through the flats, Lewis realises they contain some serious hazards. We've got a pigeon here, uh, one of our feral friends, another uh, problem that we've got to deal with, another hazard. Oh, well, you can clearly see this flat's been on fire. Another hazard to the job. Quite extensive fire. Um, if the fires damage the building structure, that's a major hazard for Lewis and his team. So as you can see here, uh, the fire's been obviously creating some heat and it started melting all the electrical goods. So as we've seen, that's as we've had fires, we've had vermin, uh, needles, um, 48 flats to do, really mammoth task in front of us, uh, massive. The job is far bigger and more dangerous than Lewis originally thought, and that's a problem. You've got to clear nine of these properties a day. Uh, and if we fail, then it's going to have an, uh, an effect on the contractors coming in behind us. So, you know, the pressure's on. But first, in Greenock, Lewis has unearthed a super-sized problem lurking in a block of 48 flats. He's supposed to clear them so that a demolition team can go in. But his inspection revealed not only tons of junk, but fire damage, vermin, dangerous holes in the floors, 
and even human waste. Smells in here, I think I've used this room as some sort of toilet. <coughs> but the worst problem is hundreds of needles abandoned by drug users. The risk of disease means these will have to be cleared before anything else can be shifted. He's breaking the bad news to the team. Gents, a uh, massive task of areas, 48 flats, there's needles, pigeons. So there's a whole combination of all sorts of hazards in there. We've got seven days to turn that round, guys, so we need to be on the money. First in is Frankie. He soon discovers the boss wasn't exaggerating. Right, guys, in the corner here, we've got a shooting gallery. Really bad. But first of all, watch yourself in the wall here. We've got a dirty protest. This is a bad bit of the job. It does turn my stomach with these needles lying about. But you, what you have to remember is a needle won't jump up and bite you. As long as you're careful, it is safe. Many of these needles will have come from the free needle exchange programmes, meant to keep injecting drug users safe. But if the used needles are left lying about, they become a danger for whoever has to clean them up. This is what we're up against. This is what slows you up. We have 40-odd houses to do, and obviously you just can't steam in there. This is all too common. Boulders that are lying derelict for so long, this is what happens. If you're going to clear derelict houses around here, you have to be aware of the medical dangers. There's always a threat of like hepatitis, whether it's B or C. Always AIDS problems. Um, it's like there's some here. There we go. The more you look, the more you find. Don't know why they don't make them glow in the dark. It'd make their job a lot easier and a lot safer. This was always a massive job, but the huge number of needles and the dangers of disease they bring has seriously slowed the lads down. It can be pretty soul destroying. It uh, just seems never ending when you've got as many rooms. Education campaigns mean the incidence of HIV AIDS among drug users has been going down, but hepatitis, especially hepatitis C, has been on the increase. The lads have no choice but to check for needles before starting the job of clearing the junk. Possibly a lot of needles here. Yeah. Just got to pick our way through it and hopefully get it done by the week. The week's out. Or Louis's going to kick her ass. James has found some other drug paraphernalia. These are the citrus packets. These are all issued to the drug users. Citric acid packs are issued to heroin users to help dissolve heroin for injection. Without it, they use acids like lemon juice, which gets infected. It can cause heart problems and blindness. Once again, it's James and his colleagues clearing up. There's always the worry that we maybe miss something. James knows that you also need to worry about the needles you can't see. Sometimes they like to hide the needles, so when you don't find it the first time, you don't really want to find it the wrong way. And sure enough, hidden behind the cushions is another stash. Oh, hidden behind the couch. So we're probably going to have to strip the couch out, check inside, because uh, sometimes they just like to stuff needles down behind the cushions. This could be repeated in each of the 48 flats. That we might, we might be a bit off more than we can chew here. Um, but just got to stay positive and just get on with it. Lots of work has been done, but not a single flat has been cleared. The arrival of two big skips means that at last the lads can move on to the next phase of the job. The first room is clear of needles, so furniture and junk can at last be cleared out. But it's still painfully slow as the team works around the other dangers of the Greenock flats. Obviously, another hazard we've got to deal with every day is these big holes in the floor, and we've got to carry items across these holes, and it's pretty dangerous. Even without the extra dangers, there's just a whole lot of lifting and carrying ahead of them. It takes you out here, about 54 stairs to go up and down about 100 times a day, so I'm 47 and nearly dead, so it's my premature death is coming. Assuming that doesn't happen in the next hour or so, Ian and the lads will have reached the end of the first day, and it's been a bit depressing. A bit disappointed the skip isn't full, but we have had to go slow looking for the needles. You know, I'm sure people will understand. Tomorrow morning, a new day, new dawn. Bring it on.
Greenock, near Glasgow. It's early morning and the extreme cleaning team tackling a wrecked block of 48 flats is hoping for better progress. Their first day was slowed down by hundreds of dirty used needles left behind by drug users. Even without needles, they know today won't be any easier. Yeah, this is one of the worst rooms we've got to deal with. It's fire damaged. Just removing these boards so we can get a bit more light inside. The fire damaged room isn't a pretty sight. Now we've got the window boards off, you can actually see what a state this is. Yeah, I'll have to make sure the floorboards are intact. Uh, take away the ceiling, it's dropped down obviously. We'll have to shovel all this debris away before we can even think about moving all this safely out the door. Uh, it's going to be a long, slow, drawn-out process. The fallen ceiling could be hiding dangerous holes in the floor. They're desperately hoping it doesn't also hide yet more needles. That is really bad news. There we go. Worst fears for in here. I can count at least six needles there. Cooking up spoons down there. This has made the job ten times as big, ten times as hard, and ten times as dangerous. But they have no choice. Proceed with extreme caution. Just need to play it by ear. Clearing the flats has turned into a race against time. They won't get back the days lost to needle clearing. With 48 flats to get through, this is a huge job. But it's going from technical and hazardous to old-fashioned hard physical graft. At last, there are some rooms ready to clear. It's a bit of a mess, this one, boys, I think. Clearly. First, to remove all the large furniture. Our usual three floors up, couches, units. It's just normal, but could do without it this time of day, basically. Getting bulky furniture through narrow stairwells and doors is bound to be slow. It doesn't help that the skip isn't where they expected it to be. I don't know who part to skip there, but it's about 50 yards too far away. <laughs> At last, they're shifting some real tonnage, though it's not obvious how some of this stuff got into the flats in the first place. Although Ian's an old hand at the cleaning game now, he didn't always find it easy. I didn't like the smells at first, but... Well, I don't, still don't like the smells, don't get me I've not created that. Passion for them, I think. Each team member has something they dread finding in their personal room 101. People's false teeth, that's a killer for me. I reckon probably the... It comes to cleaning up the pigeons mess. With the drug paraphernalia gone, the giant skips finally get filled. Rooms you couldn't get into return to something like normal. There's one final task. Seal the building up to make sure no one can get in again before it's demolished. When the boss returns, he knows his team has had a hard week. It was a big push with all my guys. We'd done about 10. Uh, the big skips, that's about 40 tonne, approximately, and I'll tell you what, I'm relieved that's over. 